Hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. It's me and my friend Jaime. He's no stranger to this channel. We're out here today doing a little woods hasty 3D shoot. We have a couple targets. We're gonna be going back and forth, different yardage, playing around. We thought we would bring you along and do a fun video. There's not a lot of time we get to come out and just do fun stuff right. instead of tutorials and all that. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about gear. We'll start off with Jaime, what he's shooting, cause you're all gonna ask in the comments and then we'll get to what I'm shooting. So Jaime, take it away. So this is my baby, the Bear Kodiak Magnum. Actually, this is the commemorative edition that came out in uh, 2011, I don't know if y'all can see that. But it, the bow actually first came out in 1961. Let me confirm that, that is correct. So this is the bow that a lot of people told Fred Bear could not be made a short recurve bow uh, that he wanted to make for hunting. So guess what, in 1961, the Bear Kodiak Magnum came out. That was just after the Kodiak that everybody loved. That was a 62 inch. This is at 52. Now I didn't have my uh, stats right and ready to go. But anyways, shorter bow, great for out here, out in the bush uh, when you're having to deal with close quarters. And I really love this bow. There's a couple of myths that have come around with the shorter bow situation, either that the fingers are gonna start getting pinched on the string or that uh, you might hit some stacking once you hit that, that, that manufactured uh, draw length. But I've got plenty of friends that have shot this bow with a 29, 29 and a half inch draw and no issues whatsoever. So love this little bow. You guys are gonna get to see me shooting it. It's got a, most of the bear bows have a, a gold medallion. This one's got the little silver medallion for that 50th. So really love it. Uh, bow string that I made myself. Same colors as the manufacturing bow string, but nice. the uh, kind of the, the, whoever now owns bear, their bow strings are probably not the best no, from what I've seen. I'm gonna come out and say they suck. Yeah. They suck. They need to be replaced. One of the biggest things that I, we've noticed on those strings is that uh, as a Flemish, when the tampering comes down, this was obviously done on a homemade string jig by me. So I say obviously because of the way that there is no abrupt end and it looks like almost like a mini string silencer. This has been on a string jig where the ends are feathering or actually twisting and blending in. And not only that, you notice that the two bundles are blended together as one string. What I've noticed on some of the manufactured strings that are coming with the companies, they're cabled, meaning those two bundles have not blended into one. They look like how my fingers are. That's called cabling. So even though the string is serviceable, it's still, it's not as, mm, as efficient as it should be. Meaning all the tension is being distributed throughout the string itself within the two bundles. But that's actually a, a good topic for another video. So John- Hey, let them know what your quiver is because oh, yes. that's your pride and joy right there. Also, aside from the bow that I love, great Northern bow quivers, cool little company. They actually were inspired by the original bear quiver that they made back in the day when so fred bear has always been ahead of uh with a lot of his innovations ahead of the game like with his takedown bow but when he came out with this particular type of oak or not this one but his design and if y'all have ever taken the time to look at the historical bear bow quivers it's a very simple wire design that would either get screwed on or taped on so great northern bow quivers were inspired by that and thus came up with this design this is obviously a screwed in a screw in type to the riser and these bows, obviously the bear bows and a lot of other manufacturers already come pre-drilled, tapped to accept these kinds of quivers. But if not, let's say you got an old vintage bow, Great Northern Quivers does make one where you can actually have these little rubber straps in it and it straps on. And that's what I had on my first Martin X200. Great little quiver, worked well on that bow and I have actually passed that quiver on to a good buddy of mine. So Great Northern Bow Quiver with the Bear Kodiak Magnum. Man, it, you just can't go wrong. You want to let them know what arrow you're shooting? Oh, that's another good thing. Rip this one out. So along with, uh, it's not just traditional archery I, that I refer to this all to, but vintage archery. So vintage in the sense that we're shooting that equipment from those uh, early pioneers. Along with that, besides the wooden arrows, aluminum is pretty much considered now an old time type of arrow shaft. This is, try to get the logo here. The Easton Legacy, hopefully you guys can see that. I'm a big fan. This is the older graphic of the of this uh, Legacy. Now they, they got a, a completely different one. This one still sports the the faux footed shaft look. Hope y'all can catch that. But So it's not only mimicking uh, the, the, the grain of a wooden arrow, but also mimicking uh, a footed shaft. 
and that's uh, a hardwood that's spliced into with a typical aero shaft. Now, does that make any difference here on the graphic? No, on the flight, no. But the point is, is that uh, it's aluminum. I've made a video on, on how much I like aluminum. They've been around since the 30s, uh, 40s, and thus the term that I choose to use, vintage archery. Now everyone's pretty much shooting carbon, but you've got your trad guys still shooting wood, and there's still some that are still loving the aluminum. So pairing my love for the aluminum with the old school traditional uh, bows and quiver designs, even though they're the modern look, it still has the roots and it's a vintage uh, background, vintage history. So I love it, can't go wrong with it. I like the fact that he's using uh, white fletching too. So when he's shooting first, I have something I can focus on when, <laughs> when we're out there. That is correct, yeah. Uh, I do my own little quick uh, little spray paint job on these. It's kind of a two day build process. Glue on the knocks, spray down the uh, arrow, obviously with some painter tape to get that border. And then uh, the next day I'll, I'll do the fletching. I just recently went back to straight fletching and that's gonna be a subject of another video as to why, as opposed to like a, a helical or a semi offset. But uh, yeah, love them, can't go wrong. Five and a half inch feathers. So yeah, perfect setup. look for that video, hopefully on our channel here soon. And then I'll leave a link in the video description below to uh, the aluminum arrow video that uh, Jaime did for me and the concept of it and the uh, philosophy of use and all that good stuff. Today I'm shooting the Tiger Shark Pro. I featured this on the channel uh, probably about four or five videos ago. 45 pound, nice little rig, um, using just a uh, True Glow quiver, four arrows. Have a uh, simply traditional Flemish string on there. Got it from the, the guy from uh, Simply Traditional, custom made. And I'm shooting some carbon arrows. These are 30 inch uh, Black Eagle Vintage. I really love the design and look. And I believe, uh, anybody correct me if I'm wrong, that they custom paint these uh, arrows that way. And I want to say they're a little bit over nine grains per inch. And I'm shooting 125 grain uh, bullet nosed field point on there. So enough of the rambling. We're going to cut away. We're going to post up and then we're going to take you along back and forth doing some shooting. It's going to be a fun day, folks. See you there. Okay, uh, what we're going to do is just go around taking random shots, different shot angles and different kneeling positions, standing, crouching, like you would if you were in a blind, messing around real world stuff and just having fun. So uh, Jaime is going to kick it off. Right here, we're looking at about 16 yards. Nice. We'll be digging that one out. Okay. Taking a knee. My arrows are still kicking a little bit. I just got these arrows yesterday and I'm just trying to work on the tune. So don't beat me up in the comments too much. It's a work in progress with this bow to tune this arrow to it. So three shots, let's go up close. So not too bad, 16 yards. Uh, we, we're not cold shooting, I'm not gonna lie. We've been out here shooting around, we're warmed up. We probably shot 20 arrows, but uh, we're having fun. Looks like it's uh, pretty much kill shots. So onward to the next one. So this is what we're shooting at, this uh, Delta McKenzie Raccoon from about, let me pull back, from about 19, 20 yards from where we're kneeling down. Oops. 
So Jaime likes to see an old guy kneel down here in the woods. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. That was not a kill shot. Deadwood, but not a kill shot. Headshot. Of course, we got about an eight degree downhill slope. There we go. That might be a 10X. We'll roll up, check it out. So I got an ocular cavity shot. Looked like I hit him in the uh, arm. Jaime got a stump shot, a rear leg shot, and we both got a deadwood shot. So we're working progress on this one back at the yacht from a different angle. Okay, we got this piece of sage that we're kind of using as a little bit of blind. And this is probably about 17 yards. I feel like a golf commentator. <laughs> Gotta get... Here, I'm trying to get the camera. I'm moving around. We're in the woods, guys, so the camera's gonna move a little bit. There you go. So what's good about this is that we keep moving around so we're not getting used to every shot and every shot angle. So we're shaking it up a little bit. It's making your brain have to figure out that algorithm of hitting the target quote, more realistic than just going to the line and just repeating the same shot over and over and over, then, I mean, you can make that look easy after a couple shots. But if we're constantly moving, we're adding obstacles, we're adding brush and stuff, it's just going to get your senses better for deer season and rabbit season, whatever, whatever you're doing. Enough with me cackling here. Let's, uh, let's kill that yoke. Oh, hope I find that arrow. Overshot him. Overshot him again. That's why we do this. Shoot low. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So Jaime got three hits. I got two goose eggs. Hopefully I can find him. And uh, a, a back shot so he's laying somewhere disabled right now this nasty mangy dog has been repurposed now this is the third time i've sprayed foam insulation in there and then i bought a can of the aerosol plasti dip i'll leave some photos of that restoration project right now so you guys can see it's it's not pretty but it'll stop an arrow. And for about 12 bucks, because I already had the paint at home, I mean, now we could probably shoot a couple hundred more arrows in this. So it just extended the life of this 3D target. Nice. So I'll zoom in on this target after we shoot. We're using that sage as kind of a little bit of cover for that raccoon to kind of shake it up and get our mind focused on trying to hit the target. One more. Let's do it. Redemption. Nice. So on that last volley, I lost an arrow over the yoke. Normally when we're out here, we're using judo points or Jaime's using the uh, bunny busters and it gets caught up in the duff and it usually kicks the arrow up where we can see either the knock or uh, the fletching. But uh, the arrow gods weren't so friendly today. So I may have to come back with my fancy metal detector later on and try to find that. But uh, 
the show must go on. Hey, it's only a $12 mistake, right? Hey, what's $12? had a deflection I see it in the road I got the Marines coming my favorite my favorite buddies I think I got it between the eyes shot on that one what's nice about this sage is that it really makes you focus on the target and looking past it so this is our score on the last one we were shooting probably about 19 yards on that had my ocular cavity shot looks like Jaime got him in the cheeks that raccoon won't be smiling much and then we had a couple body shots and then I had a deflection and yeah remember I tell you just like my practice there's always that one arrow at least there I I could find it so back to the oat for some redemption okay this is the old peekaboo shot before we uh, fired up the camera we were practicing this shot and Jaime got a deflection off the tree and got a kill shot. And if I can download the uh, Mortal Kombat uh, uh, kill shot uh, sound, I'll do that and put that in there every time we get one. But we're uh, going to pull back and we're going to let Jaime fire away. It actually stuck in the pine tree. He got a kill shot on that uh, coulter pine in the back. Hanging up on a wall. It's got a trophy. There we go. Kill shot. Okay. When I was shooting the raccoon, I had that one deflection and it had a really hard hit. So if you're shooting carbon arrows, a little PSA here, you always wanna check after when in doubt and give it the flex test. Cause the last thing you want is carbon to shatter. And then all of a sudden now you're taking it home with you probably for a very long time in your hand. So just a safety note, anytime you're in doubt, you have a hard hit, Give it that test if there's a little bit of buzz and then check it out. You probably got a crack or a little fissure in there. It's gonna happen over time. That's why I shoot aluminum. <laughs> He's right about that. He's starting to turn me towards aluminum, by the way. On the Samic Discovery, I'm shooting uh, the newer um, Legacies. So we'll do a profile on that in an upcoming video. I gotta do a little redemption because the past two times has just been not good. And yeah, my arrows aren't flying perfect. I still gotta tune them. But the pine pitch on my hand is sticking to the grip really well. So it's like in baseball. Let's pull up close. And then I'm gonna show you the tree that he killed. Okay, here's our latest shot so i had a couple forward of the kill zone nice nice little tight group jaime got that one kill shot and then a lung shot and then i'm gonna zoom up try to stay he's got a kill shot on this coulter pine check it out he dead centered that coulter pine so now he's got a trophy he can take home if he's got a big enough chainsaw So we're gonna shake it up. We're using the tree as cover, but we're gonna take one step out and then shoot the arrow. There we go, kind of like Yogi Bear going after the picnic baskets. Boy, that raccoon, he's a crafty lad he is. Like a force field around that coon right now. 
There you go. Okay, boo boo. We're gonna get us some picnic baskets. Okay. Probably see this pose from the original Die Hard, right? Where Bruce Willis <laughs> is hiding behind the wall before he says the yippee ki yay, blankety blank blank. Then he comes around and gets the guy. Well, we're gonna yippee ki yay that coon, hopefully. Let's do it. I'm gonna try to speed it up. Hopefully I don't deflect. Yippee-ki-yay, raccoon. <laughs> oh, came off the shelf. Oh, my arrow came off the shelf on my hand on that one. Okay, yippee-ki-yay, raccoon. Oh, <laughs> take two, yippee-ki-yay, raccoon. <laughs> We're having fun. a little bit different okay it looks like the raccoon got a larynx shot so he won't be singing in the glee club here anytime soon then i got a cheek shot and then the rest one like lower body shot and the rest the raccoon's just laughing at us at this point so we're gonna get redemption on this coon here on the next go round. okay this shot we're gonna shake it up a little bit we're still Half of the yote is protected by that coulter pine. So the challenge is Jaime's going to shoot two arrows kneeling and then one arrow standing. And then penalty for failure is uh, you got the pucker brush behind it. Nice. Good arrow flight too. Nice. Really? Hey, we may get some fat wood out of that tree from that. That's awesome. Hey, at least, at least you know where your arrow's at. I, I saw where it went though. Right by the heavy green, greenage. Okay. Like they say in the Robin Hood movies, arrow be true. Let's hope we're true here. That one went deep. That skipped and went deep. Okay. I killed a coulter pine with my arrows. Oh, I gotta stand up for this one. Okay. A little bit easier. Now I'm shooting down instead of shooting up. This Three. shot's a little bit tougher than, yeah, no kill shot. Three. Okay, the tree claimed one, two, three arrows. And then Jaime got a nice little group there. And then of course one of my arrows went way off into the back 40. <laughs> so I'm gonna do an Easter egg hunt and then we'll figure out what the next shot is gonna be. On that arrow that went way back into the pucker brush, I'm gonna show you. It went through all that nonsense to there. Luckily, it didn't go under the duff, but uh, I'm glad I was able to recover it. The good thing about coming out here in the woods like this is that we get to take a little downtime, a little intermission, and uh, we're gonna cook some lunch. Today, I'm gonna fry up some uh, bacon and eggs on my Trangia. So it's gonna be the maiden voyage for my Trangia stove. Hey, you can't go wrong. Archery, bacon and eggs. Oh my God, it's like hitting the lotto. So as long as we find that arrow, that'll be the lottery win. But until then, we're not gonna worry about it. We're too blessed to be stressed. Ooh, we got a pretty boil. So I'm gonna hook Jaime up here with the first cup. See if I can do this left-handed here. 
This is the X brew from Sea to Summit. We're just gonna let that brew and then I'm gonna put another spot of water on the boil for cup number two. Man, I love this Trangia stove. Hey, folks are gonna ask, what coffee? Today I'm doing Starbucks caramel. Tastes really good. I'm not a huge coffee connoisseur, but uh, I really enjoy that flavor. So let's get to uh, pouring another cup of joe here, and then we'll get the baking going. Like I said earlier, this Sea to Summit works really well. And it just compresses right down. Now there's gonna be size and weight constraints on everything. I'm gonna put out that fire for right now until we're ready to cook the bacon. Bacon coming along. Can't go wrong with bacon in the woods. And it just smells good. It's awesome. Look at that. I wish we had smell vision on video. Okay, we ate lunch. We're full, bacon and eggs. Now uh, we're gonna do, Jaime suggested that we do like a uh, distance drill. So he trains his students from different distances each arrow. So he's gonna shoot one arrow from here, take three steps, shoot another one, take three steps, shoot another one. And then I'm gonna follow right behind him. Nice, kill shot. I need to download that kill shot. Nice. I think Jaime's done this before. Nice. So. About right there. Cold shot, we've taken about two hours off. And. I shot over. At least the tree slowed that one down. If I don't trip over one of these Coulter pine cones out here. All right, my shots. And then I had that one that hit the tree back there. Nice little drill though to shake it up. So we're going to do the same drill as the coyote but in reverse now on the raccoon. And when we're done we're going to be at probably about 19 yards, 20 yards away. And I'll zoom in real quick here so you can see. All righty. Nice. And he's coming back. Nice. Nice grouping. Very good. All right. Right. Had to look through that sage. Mm -hmm. It was trying to distract me a little bit.
reasons that we're doing this this shooting drill this is what I like to uh, when I'm with my students we start to try to instill the different distances because as instinctive shooters we're not using range finders or whatnot we're not uh, string walking so it's a, it's a subconscious method of shooting so what's happening is we establish in baby steps these different ranges although John and I were taking uh, three paces back or in between shots for my new students it's literally it's like shuffle back shuffle back or shuffle forward shuffle forward so we're slowly but surely letting the subconscious mind record those trajectories that at this distance that flight of that the, the flight of that arrow is going to be at this arc and then as I go back I, I, I lean up so it's a it's a very subtle projection uh, uh, method of programming everything into the subconscious mind but once that's done on numerous times going back and then coming forward and back and forth then I'll start to pop quiz them and I start to tell the student okay take a shot from here take a shot from there but you can't get to that level until you've already pre-programmed those distances. So maybe this will give you an idea of how to kind of mix up your training. So start from wherever you're comfortable at, where you know your patterns are tight, and then just take a baby step back, dump out your quiver right there, then get your arrows, baby step back. So we're shuffling slowly but surely, and then same way, inching our way forward. And you don't even have to worry where you're at. Don't worry about am I at the 10, at the 15, at the, just little by little, little by little, because if you're gonna inevitably go out bow hunt or just do some 3D target, sometimes you don't know what those ranges are. We need to be able to get out there and just hit those targets without knowing the distance. And this is what programs the mind. So we're gonna do the uh, three pace again, a little bit of a challenge. There's the dog back there. And uh, we're gonna give it a whirl. Hopefully I can get Jaime in frame here. There we go. Fire away, brother. Follow through. Nice. So these are fun drills that are really going to challenge you as you develop as a shooter. Is this about where you started? Yeah. Okay, close enough for GOV work. Oh, I saw where that one went though. Could be an expensive day out here for me today. <laughs> We've already gave one arrow tribute to the archery gods. And of course, when you want to film, we got Gunny Highway in the United States Marine Corps flying over. But uh, probably most of those shots would have been a kill shot. Jaime's top back one would have been a, a rear quarter gut shot, would have slowed him down a little bit. But uh, we would have caught up to him. We would have ran that, that bad boy down. Fun drill. And I did find my arrow. Nice. So we're doing one standing. One kneeling, then he's going to cross the other side of the road and take another shot. Oh, he's going to kneel. He's going to throw me a curveball. Nice. Okay. I gotta redeem myself. Only have three arrows because I lost my other arrow. <laughs> the other ones have the uh, little bunny busters on there. Oh. 
And then from the crouching tiger hidden dragon motion, I'm gonna go with the leg out like a tripod. Right. And with that, that's a wrap folks. We'll come back for some final comments. So we're gonna wind this video down. There's only so many times you guys wanna watch us shoot the coyote here in the raccoon. But uh, what we wanted to do today was just kinda of illustrate coming out here, having fun, doing some drills, shaking it up a little bit because um, Jaime has a little bit different philosophy of shooting than I do, which doesn't mean that his way's wrong or my way's wrong or right. And I can let Jaime talk about his style real quick and I'll close out. So basically I kind of covered it when I was talking about my drill, but uh, I'm pretty much uh, sticking to what would be considered instinctive archery. But uh, the, the, the true way of calling that is subconscious aiming or subconscious shooting, because what we're doing is uh, we're staying present in the moment with our form and our technique, our kinesiology and all that good stuff in regard to the aiming we are not consciously worrying about that through the practice like the shooting drills that I spoke of subconsciously the mind and body connection are slowly learning in which way to properly position the body so consciously we're not worried about where the tip of the arrow is or anything like that and the reason for this is so that when we're out in the out in the woods we're out deer hunting or whatever or a 3d range and we don't know what the yardage and whatnot is we don't have to worry about that. If we got a moving target, one of my favorite practicing targets is a small water balloon that's uh, just uh, blown up and tethered to a piece of dental floss so it's moving around. I don't have to worry about distance, elevation, or anything. I just pull back and shoot. Now, mind you, I practice, practice, practice. So that's the beauty of it is that I don't have to worry about what's that distance or what's the elevation. It does take time. It does take practice. And a lot of times, if, if you're looking to do this on your own, it can become very frustrating. So it does help to find someone that can slowly show you the, the process. And the biggest thing for those of you that may start on that path is get up close to your targets, get up almost point blank. One of the things I do with my students is I have them get really close and they close their eyes. So they're shooting point blank with eyes closed to get the form down. And then once that's getting ingrained into their subconscious mind, we slowly start to back up. So it's just practicing, but also knowing that you don't want to get too stressed out about it or too, too frustrated. Once that starts to kick in, then things are going to go yeah. sideways and south on you. So that's kind of very, uh, a short, quick recap on the way uh, or, or description of how it is that I shoot. It, it takes a little bit of time, but with the passion and with the practice, you can get really good. Uh, today, my shooting suffered a little bit, but uh, we all have our good days and our bad days. What about you, John? Uh, well, as you guys follow along on Instagram and some on Facebook, you know, everybody's a champion in their backyard and at 15 yards, you know, I'm getting tight groups. Today I'm pushing it 20 yards, some a little bit 20 plus. I'm out on the fringe of what I feel comfortable shooting and that's good. Uh, once you get a handle of, you get 10 yards locked down, you're at 15 yards locked down then slowly start backing up. And uh, half the battle is just the confidence in being able to uh, make that shot. A lot of times on the really long shot, especially like 30 yards for me, I start thinking about the distance instead of looking at the target and focusing on the target. Now, I have a little bit different philosophy. I don't really shoot, quote, instinctive. I'm more of a uh, gap shooter. And uh, where I figure out what my holdover and my hold under is based on length of the arrow. And like we said earlier, there's no wrong or right way. The good thing about what we're doing is that if you are proficient with whatever way you're doing archery, stick with it and practice it and master that. And the, probably, you know, the agreement probably from Jaime as well is have fun. If you're not having fun, then why are you doing it? And if you're getting frustrated and things like that, stop giggle and just have the mindset of like a 12 year old kid and just go out there without all the stress and the anxiety of the day and just have fun that's what this is all about uh folks i thank you so much for watching it's my friend jaime de la par of jld instinctive archery and john hope to see you on the next video folks take care